to her daughter as a way of proving to the Scottish Lords that by allowing her to bring up her child, she's not going to overly influence her daughter too much in a French way, that she will always be, first and foremost, a Scots Queen. Now, if we do have to send the young queen to France, well, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. <laughs> but until then, she is resident here with her mother, speaking only the Scots tongue. Though we do also use Latin, and you can see a little of that up above the windows there, the two letters painted in green, MR, Maria Regina, for Queen Mary, in Latin. Now, that does work for Mary, Queen of Scots, but it is for her mother, Marie de Guise. Actually, it worked quite well for the first wife of King James V, who was called Madeleine de Valois. And the king's mother was Margaret Tudor, his grandmother, Margaret Oldenburg, and his great-grandmother was Marie de Helmland. So those have been the initials of a queen for a hundred years in Scotland, without having to change. That's how clever our kings are. They don't have to redecorate when it comes to picking a wife. They pick a lady with the same initials. <laughs> they knew what they were doing, my lords and ladies, but they were also showing just how well-connected Scotland is, with exquisite silk brocade hangings woven of real gold, coming from the likes of Luca in Italy. Not just beautiful and very costly, but very practical, since you did not normally live only in one castle, but moved from palace to palace, face to place. All of these furnishings go with you. So notice how they are just tied together at intervals. No matter what size or shape your rooms might be, how many windows you have, where the windows are located, these hangings will fit any place. If you grow tired of the green and purple combination, change them out with another set. Or just have a whole room in purple or another all in green. In truth, these beautiful turkey carpets of the Ottoman Empire of Suleiman the Magnificent can easily be rolled up. Though they were not often seen on the floor, more typically put on tables or kists, as you see behind you there, or even up on the walls, but to see them on the floor was a real mark of distinction that you were good enough to walk on such luxuries where everyone else had to stick to the plain floor and mind their manners. Though since you're all in the Queen's bedchamber, obviously you are of the inner circle of her acquaintances, so you're being treated like family. Don't worry, we've got servants to clean up after you. <laughs> in truth though, even the furniture such as the silk velvet covered chairs, you take off those feather filled cushions, those chairs fold up flat, easy to store, easy to transport. Even the table with its ornately carved hawk's head feet, brightly painted there with a crimson red colour made of cochineal insects from the Americas. You just get two servants to lift the tabletop off the legs, easy to store, easy to travel. We're very pragmatic here, my lords and ladies. But all this luxury, French furniture, Italian silk hangings, exquisite linens and tapestries from the Flemish Low Countries, and the paintwork of bright colours like this verdant cream made from malachite brought from North Africa. The blue is lapis lazuli from the Middle East, and that crimson red, which was the king's favourite, made of cochineal insects from the Americas. Although it is on a smaller scale, my lords and ladies, what you see here is very much what you were seeing in France or Italy at the same time. Mostly because the king who built it had been to France, spent significant time there looking for a wife, but also enjoying the comforts and luxuries of Fontainebleau, Chambord, Saint Germain, and others. There he was seeing the artwork of Leonardo da Vinci, Cellini, and Primo Ticcio. So when he comes home, he thinks we could do that on a smaller scale, but we could still achieve that elegance here too, to perhaps make his new French bride feel more at home. Although, as I briefly mentioned, that first wife, Madeleine de Valois, didn't last so long. She'd be, as what we say in Scots, was a peely wally lassie, pale and sickly, tuberculosis. <laughs> Weather's not always like it <coughs> to do. She did not last long. Seven months, that was it, my lords and ladies, and she died in her husband's arms at Holyrood Palace. Oh, the King of Scots was so devastated. You know, he waited three whole months before deciding to get married again. <laughs> as you do. But as I say, we aren't with her king anymore, and yet her young queen, now almost three and a half, brings much joy to the place. She does like to cause much mischief as well, particularly with this strange thing. Do you know what this is, my lords and ladies? Football? Yes, exactly! So we are a little obsessed in this kingdom. We're not very good at the game, but my goodness, do we play it! We've been playing a long while now, and in fact, it's a bit of a problem. It's so distracting to the population that it is made illegal my lords and ladies, to play the game of football from 1424. Because most people do work six days a week. They're supposed to go to Kirk 
on a Sunday morning and in the afternoon every able-bodied man is meant to spend that time practicing archery or weapons training. Are they those? Are they? Or are they being distracted with sports? What do you think? <laughs> because if it's anything like the men in the 16th century or earlier, it will be the sports that captures their attention more often than not, and that's the reason that not just football but golf as well. Some golf clubs over there by the green chair. These sports are banned to prevent people from wasting their time, <laughs> which should be spent practicing archery. Although, to be honest with you, the punishment if you were caught playing these games was to be charged a fine. The money collected specifically given to those people who turned up to archery practice. So, you know, it all balances out quite nicely if you keep catching people breaking the law. So, it wasn't very seriously kept as a law, because, to be honest with you, even the kings and queens break that rule, including Mary Stuart, the Queen of Scots, she likes to play both. And oddly enough, my lords and ladies, the oldest found football yet discovered in the world so far, found in the ceiling right above your very eyes here, in this very <laughs> chamber, it is true. So it's likely not kicked up there by accident, but placed there on purpose. Since we're a little superstitious, we do worry about evil spirits and witches and demons. We thought anything touched by a child was imbued with their protective magic. And if you're going to choose anything, why not choose the very thing that distracts everyone else in the country? <laughs> Might even manage to distract the devil himself. Oh, it's always worth a go. But forgive me, I've been talking your lugs off far too long. I'll blether no more and let you look at your leisure. But it has been a true honour and privilege to meet such fine folk from about the world. We do hope you'll enjoy yourself, not just here today, but in your travels about Scotland. And when you do go home, remember, you will always be considered friends, which is why we say to people, haste you back. Come back soon. Sadly, our neighbours in England just tell people you're now leaving England, but they're very different side of the border. <laughs> it is an honour and pleasure to have met with you. I will wish you all the best, but bid you adieu. Oh.